let's talk about polyatomic ions. And let's start by just breaking down this word, polyatomic, and what does it mean? Poly is a prefix that means many. So polyatomic literally translates to many atoms. So a polyatomic ion is an ion, a charged particle, that is made up of many atoms. Here is a list of the most common polyatomic ions. You can see that they all have charges on them because they are all ions, they're all charged particles, and they all contain at least two atoms. Like this first one contains a total of five atoms, one nitrogen and four hydrogens. So we'll go ahead and, and write a definition for a polyatomic ion. It is two or more. These are always going to be non-metals. So two or more non-metals that are bonded together and they are charged. So we've got, for example, a nitrogen with four hydrogens. They're all, all five of these atoms are bonded together. And then overall, this set of five atoms carries a charge. So first I'm gonna show you this list of, like I said, the most common polyatomic ions. We're gonna write the names for these guys. This first one, NH4+, is known as ammonia. I'm sorry, ammonium, I was thinking to say. Do not do not confuse it with ammonia, which is a totally different thing. H3O+, plus, which is called hydronium. CH3COO- acetate. And I want to also add here that a lot of times the formula for CH3COO- can be written in a couple of different ways. So you could also see it written as CH3CO2 minus, and sometimes you could see it written as C2H3O2 minus. If you count the atoms out, you'll see it's the same number of atoms no matter how it's written, um, but it is written in all three of these different forms. CO32 minus is carbonate, CN minus is cyanide, HCO3 minus is bicarbonate, sometimes called hydrogen carbonate. OH minus is hydroxide. NO3 minus is nitrate. And this is not to be confused with nitrite, which is something different. And then we have phosphate. And last but not least, sulfate. Now this is not a complete list of polyatomic ions. This is just the most common polyatomic ions. There's a good chance if you're working on homework, you'll probably need a larger list than this, which you should be able to easily find by searching the internet or looking in a textbook and getting a much bigger list. But these are the ones that you'll come across the most commonly. So when a, a compound is made with a polyatomic ion, that compound is just a standard ionic compound. A cation with an anion that are physically attracted to each other due to the opposite charges of the ions. And Compounds that contain polyatomic ions are named just like regular ionic compounds. So we have four compounds here that we're gonna practice writing the names for and then also turning the names into formulas. Now this is gonna be relatively easy because we know that all four of these are going to be containing polyatomic ions, so we know to be looking for them. So here's our first one, and what we wanna do when we're looking at this, what we wanna do is look for a pattern of polyatomic ions. So we're, we're kind of looking at this list while we're also looking at this formula, and we're trying to find that common pattern. Like we're gonna maybe look for NaO on this list and see that NaO is nowhere on the list. So then we'll try OH, and we'll see, oh, here is OH. So that means that this set of OH is a polyatomic ion. I'm just gonna kind of highlight it. And we wanna treat that OH like it's its own entity. So we're not considering this as an oxygen and a hydrogen. We're considering this as a single unit that we refer to together as hydroxide. So with ionic compounds, as a reminder, we name them by naming first the cation, which in this case is sodium. And then that is followed by the name of the anion, which in this case is hydroxide, the space in between the two. So this compound is just simply named sodium hydroxide. 
Same thing, moving on to our next one. Again, we're looking at this, we're scanning this, and we're looking for a similar pattern of atoms in this list right here. They're always gonna be written in the same order, you know, so nobody's gonna take, for example, cyanide and write it as NC instead of CN. So you should be able to pretty easily find the pattern. And here we can see that our polyatomic ion is HCO3, which is this guy right here. And this guy's name is bicarbonate. So again, we name the cation first, potassium, and we follow it up with the name of the anion, bicarbonate. Potassium bicarbonate. Now for turning the names into a formula, that's a little bit easier because we're just um, looking, uh, when we are given the name, we're just gonna look the name up on the list and find the formula for the polyatomic ion. So calcium from our periodic table, we know that the calcium ion is Ca2+, I'm just gonna make a note of that underneath. Nitrate, which is polyatomic right here, nitrate is NO3 minus. And if we're looking for the formula of the compound that is formed when we add calcium and nitrate together, it makes sense to use our crisscross rule where we take the charge of one and turn that into the quantity of the other. So the charge on the nitrate, which is a minus one, that tells us how much calcium we have, just one. And the charge on the calcium, which is two, tells us how much nitrate we have. So that means we have two of the nitrate units. And to indicate that, what we're gonna do is put the nitrate unit in parentheses, the whole entire thing, and then a two on the outside. And this two is letting us know that we have two of everything right there. It is not okay, it's not standard for us to like maybe multiply everything by two, do it like that. Like that's a big old no. That's not how we go about writing it. We're gonna keep that polyatomic unit together inside parentheses with the quantity on the outside. We've got one more example down here, ammonium. That's also a polyatomic ion. It's one of our only two, there's only two positively charged polyatomics. Ammonium is NH4 plus. Phosphate, which is right here, PO43 minus. And again, we'll use the crisscross rule to help us determine what the formula is when these two ions come together. The charge on phosphate is a three, so that means that we want to have a total of three of the ammonium units. So we'll put NH4 in parentheses. We'll put the three on the outside that indicates the amount that this is telling us that we have three ammoniums because the charge on the phosphate is a three. And for phosphate, the charge on ammonium is a one, so that means we only want one phosphate. Sometimes when students are writing the formulas of polyatomics um, in an ionic compound, they really want to put the charges in, like write them up in here like this or like that. Don't do that. We didn't do that with simple ionics. You, we don't put the charge on the calcium. We don't put the charge on the sodium or this potassium. And same thing with polyatomic ions. The charges are left out.